Ganon paused. He knew he couldn't shoot Alder, but he didn't know what else to do. Before he could make sense of what was going on, he was on the ground with his gun pointed at his head. Alder asked him if he had any last words. Ganon only begged her not to destroy the world a second time, not to let Arcade grow up in a desolate hellscape. This time, Alder was the one to pause, still pointing the gun at Ganon. She snapped out of the trance as the guards entered, and when they asked what to do, she told them to lock up Ganon. After the guards left, Alder sat back down, silently thinking for hours with Ganon's words echoing around in her head. She decided to go see Arcade in the nursery. Looking at him, she felt something. Something that had been running very short for the Enclave. Hope. Arcade represented the innocence that she and the world had lost. While everyone was out there spilling blood for what little was left, ideals, resources, land, he was just lying there, unaware of the horrors of war and humanity's own passion to destroy itself. She knew in that moment he was the Enclave's future, America's future. Ganon was right after all. She couldn't destroy the world again. But that left only one other option, which didn't bring much comfort either. Alda went down to see Ganon. Upon seeing her, he asked if she was there to kill him. But she opened the cell, and told him that he was going to lead a mission into the Silent Zone. He was so shocked he could barely splutter out the words, Yes ma'am. Ganon was given complete control over the mission. Ganon chose to bring his Devil's Brigade with him, but so few were left that Alda forced him to take other soldiers as well. His team would fly in via Vertibird, then land at the Iron Mountain Bunker and reactivate it, allowing them to signal any remaining Enclave remnants. Ganon's team loaded up onto one of the last remaining Vertibirds. Alder was there to watch as they lifted off into the sky, carrying the Enclave's fate with them. As they flew on, one of the younger soldiers by the name of Autumn asked Ganon why the Silent Zone was called as such. He explained plainly, Since the war, Iron Mountain stopped transmitting signals which was typical, barely any working installations were left anymore. But the reason why it was called the Silent Zone was because there was no radio traffic out of the area since the Great War. From what the Enclave knew, there was no direct nuclear hits in the area, but nonetheless, you wouldn't know if anyone was alive in there. The men all went silent, haunted by thoughts of what could be responsible for the silence. No one spoke the rest of the flight. As the bird was nearing its destination, suddenly the power to the vertibird cut out. It was dead in the air and the bird began plummeting to the ground. The pilot desperately tried to pull up, softening the crash slightly. As the crew stumbled out of the downed bird, they tried to regain their bearings. Gannon requested a status report. The co-pilot and two others were dead and the pilot was injured. Whatever caused the vertibird to crash also knocked out all their power armor suits. It took a while but they were reactivated. Ganon ordered Autumn to stay with Whitman and try to reactivate the radio to call for help. The other soldiers left the crash site with Ganon to continue to the bunker. As they did, a distant roar echoed through the mountains, warning of what lay ahead. The soldiers walked through the heavy snow and wind for what seemed like hours, eventually coming up to flat ground, but suddenly all of their power armor turned off again, and another roar was heard, but this time much closer. It was at this moment when grotesque monsters began surrounding them, snapping at them, preparing to attack. The power armor suits were offline, but the soldiers could still move enough to fire shots at the creatures which killed a few and scared the rest off. The power armor came back online soon after. The soldiers hurriedly continued on their path. After another hour, they spotted the entrance to the bunker just ahead of them and managed to open it with little difficulty. The bunker was strangely silent. There was blood all over the walls, but no bodies. The team continued on until they found the command center. The systems were all offline, but were able to be powered by a power armor suit. Unfortunately, it did not provide enough power to activate the radio array, but it did give access to all the data available on the facility. Ganon searched through the data to find something useful. Eventually, he saw the reactor was located on the lowest level. He almost left it there, but something else caught his eye a folder titled Experiments. Searching through it, there was a little of note, some interesting weapons and armor, but mostly nothing, until he got to the biological section. Something named Organic EMP. Upon further investigation, it detailed of an artificially created species designed for use against Chinese vehicles and infantry. Having the ability to disable electronics and rip apart humans with ease, the creatures looked exactly like the ones encountered on the mountain. That explained the vertebrate and power armor failure. 
The team continued on down the stairs to the lowest level. Walking into the reactor room, the floor was covered by the monsters swarming everywhere and a giant tunnel leading outside. Everyone retreated back upstairs. There had to be a way to kill them. Ganon searched the computers again and again until finally finding a contingency in case of subject outbreak. A chemical designed to target the DNA of the subjects, located in the biolab. The team then headed towards the biolab, where their power armor shorted out again. Brute forcing their way into moving around in the heavy armor, the soldiers saw the creatures coming at them and opened fire, burning the creatures to ash. They continued wandering until they found the chamber that kept the poison. They all took as many barrels as they could carry, with their armor coming back online soon after to assist them in moving the chemicals. The soldiers piled all the barrels at the top of the stairs above the reactor room. When all were ready, Captain Krieger stuck a grenade to one of the barrels, and as everyone started kicking the barrels down into the room below, Krieger primed the grenade and threw the barrel down along with the rest. The barrels toppled down into the nest of monsters. As the grenade exploded, it sent chemicals and shrapnel everywhere, covering the creatures with the liquid and turning them into goo. The soldiers all started throwing grenades down into the room to finish off the creatures. Suddenly, an ear-splitting roar came echoing from around the corner where the reactor was located. It was a massive, hulking abomination that stood at least 10 feet tall. At the same time, a chorus of roars could be heard outside. More of the monsters started swarming in from the tunnel. As the first few jumped into the pool of chemicals and melted, the creatures that followed began leaping over the pools and charging the soldiers. The soldiers started spraying down wave after wave of them, until finally all that was left was the bodies, and of course, the giant one. It was too big to jump over the pool, so the soldiers started emptying into it from a distance, but the damn thing didn't fall. Out of nowhere, it managed to leap all the way over the chemicals and land in front of the soldiers, snapping up Sergeant Moreno in one gulp. The rest retreated back up the stairs, still laying fire at the beast. Yet nothing was effective. Then with a loud cry, the creature started melting at the bottom as foul-smelling liquid came pouring out. Moreno crawled out from underneath the creature, covered in bile. Just to make sure it was dead, he punched a grenade through its eye into its head. That appeared to be all of the creatures, so the team started working on the reactor. It wasn't long before it was operational again and the radio arrays were back online. Ganon sent out a distress signal in all channels calling what was left of the Enclave to California. Back at Navarro, Alder was getting worried, having not heard from Ganon or his team in over 24 hours. To make matters worse, a large military force consisting of NCR troopers as well as members of the Brotherhood of Steel was spotted heading to Navarro. There wasn't enough room on the vertebrates to evacuate everyone, and help didn't appear to be coming, so all the Enclave could do was prepare for the end. But if they were going down, they would take as many of their enemies as they could with them. As the attackers closed in, the vertebrates were sent out to strafe them, which proved effective at first. However, one of the Brotherhood soldiers fired something that appeared to cause one of the birds to crash. The other had to take evasive maneuvers to escape the area. The enemies moved onwards determined to reach the base. The sentries began firing at them, though it did little with the abundance of tree cover. It wasn't long before the enemies were firing into the base, charging the entrance. Alder was about to give the order to destabilize the reactor, when suddenly, the wind began whistling, and then roaring, and then pounding. She realized it wasn't wind, and looked at the sky to see a fleet of vertebrates painting the sky. The first row came swooping down, spreading fire into the attackers, gunning them all down even as they tried to retreat. The vertebrates all found their space to land one by one. As Ganon came emerging from one end of the vertebrates, Alder knew his mission had been successful, bringing the rest of the Enclave scattered to the wastes back together. There was still hope after all, but first things first, she had to inspect the weapon that downed that vertebrate. Upon getting it analyzed, it appeared to be a weapon designed to take down vertebrates. If the Brotherhood had access to this kind of technology, it would be a significant undertaking to neutralize the threat which prompted the discussion how best to deal with their enemies. As she conversed with Ganon, he suggested they load up the fleet of vertebrates with napalm and burn down NCR, which would hopefully draw out the Brotherhood. She countered with a different option, stating she didn't want to lose anyone else in this war. She proposed that they attempt to make a deal with NCR. While risky, if it worked, it may draw the Brotherhood in negotiations by proxy, or if worse came to worst, 
the NCR may help them defend against the Brotherhood. Ganon expressed his dislike of the idea, but he also reminded her that she was the commanding officer, and if she wanted to take such risk, then he wouldn't be able to stop her. So it came down to Alder again. Would she choose to burn their enemies down, or to risk negotiating with them? <laughs>